Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this time we're focused on sensor size. Focused is here because really understanding your camera makes you a better photographer. I had this camera before consumer digital cameras were even invented, and I bought one of the first digital cameras when it came on the market. It took pictures that were 640 by 480 pixels, smaller than a third of a megapixel. From the beginning, though, of consumer digital cameras, we were conditioned to ask about how many millions of picture elements or megapixels a camera had. While it's true that the number of pixels plays a role in the quality of an image, there's something else that matters quite a bit. Sensor size. Sensor quality improves as the years go by, but as a general rule, if two camera image sensors come out in the same year and they're both 16 megapixels, but one is a full frame sensor, which is the same physical size as a 35 millimeter film negative, and the other is a 16 megapixel sensor that's 1 over 1.7 inches, like you might find in a small entry level point and shoot camera, that full frame sensor is going to capture remarkably better image detail. Everything from low light sensitivity to subtle nuances in color are always much better on those larger sensors. So when you go out there looking at cameras, dig a little deeper than megapixel count. Find out about the sensor size. There are lots of different sensor sizes, so let's go through a list of the more common ones to get an idea how they relate to one another. We'll go from large to small. A full frame sensor is around the same size, as I mentioned, like a 35 millimeter film negative, around 36 by 24 millimeters. They're in pro DSLRs and a few high-end mirrorless cameras. You find APS-C sensors in entry-level and enthusiast DSLRs, as well as many mirrorless cameras. These have less than half the surface area of a full-frame sensor, but they're still fairly big. Four-third sensors are a bit smaller than that. These are in Pentax and Olympus mirrorless cameras, among others. And the Nikon 1 Series mirrorless cameras, well, the sensor in here is about just over half the surface area compared to four-thirds. A two-thirds inch sensor is included in most Fujifilm point and shoots. Just don't confuse them with Fujifilm mirrorless cameras, which have a much larger APS-C sensor. Sensors usually associated with point and shoots come in sizes like 1 over 1.7 inches or 1 over 2.3 inches, and then most cell phone camera sensors are slightly smaller than that. You guys should have started with a bigger sensor than full frame, like a medium format sensor. Heck, NASA has some sensors that are even bigger. And you didn't mention that the Canon APS-C sensors are fractionally different in size than Nikon and Sony APS-C sensors. You left out the Sigma Foveon sensor and the Canon APS-H sensor. There's even censorship technology that uses a smaller sensor to capture huge raw images like 64 megapixels. How is anybody ever going to get their photographic engineering degree watching this video? Yeah, I know there are other sensor sizes, but those are the main ones. One other thing that sensor size affects is your field of view. So if you have a removable lens and you're looking at the millimeter number on the lens to figure out what your field of view is going to be, you'll need to know your camera's crop factor, and that's based on the sensor size. But we have other focused episodes all about focal length and crop factor, so check those out. That wraps it up for this episode of Focus. Focus is made possible thanks to B&H, Kelby One, and these nice people. If you have any questions for us, leave them in the comments below and be sure that you subscribe because we don't want you to miss an episode. We'll see you next time.